Hello and welcome to this episode of AA Connect, uh, a podcast that talks about issues around mobility in South Africa and the world, and it's brought to you by the Automobile Association of South Africa. Uh, today in studio, I'm very privileged to be joined by Mr. Nick Hughes, the Managing Director of Halls Financial Services, who has 18 years experience, um, and prior to joining the Halls Group, you were involved in Hollard, Nick, um, and you've basically worked in South Africa and around the world, a lot of experience in insurance, right? Yes, thanks, uh, Leighton. Thanks very much for having me, and... Um yeah, so I've a, a journey in financial services in South Africa and uh, and um, privileged to be here today. Thank good. you. Good. No, good Good to have you with us, Nick. Um, we're talking about insurance uh, uh, at a very important time of the year, uh, end of the year. And I think, um, you know, when people uh, think about insurance, uh, they, they tend to squirm. It's one of those, those things that people don't really like to do. Um, and it's a very important topic. But I think before we get into it, let's just kind of flesh out a little bit more about what it is you do and what it is Halls does. Um, I think some people have an idea of Halls, um, but tell us a little bit more about Halls Financial Services. Yeah, uh, so Halls, the group, is 130 years old. Okay. Year. So You weren't around at uh, the beginning. I wasn't around <laughs> the beginning. Um, I, I look good for, for my age. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's 130 years old. Uh, the original fruit farm is from the Nelspruit Bombela and Bombela area. And so those are the people when I'm driving down to Nelspruit and I see the Halls thing on the side of the road. Th- this is the same group exactly. of people, right? Yeah, exactly. So okay. So the farms and even the new development in and around Nelspruit on the way to White River is, is very much Hall's land that's been converted into commercial space. So we're still very much largely involved in fruits, more avocados um, and pecan nuts um, in South Africa. Uh, but we've got a diversified family business, which mm. covers uh, student accommodation, um, data and analytics, uh, and financial services. Okay. And uh, so. This is a family that started out, they farmers, they started a stall on the side of the road, and at some point they said, you know what, guys, we've got to look at doing other things. We've got experience, yes, we're farmers, but uh, we can do more things than just farm, and this is how it grew out of that. And what you're talking about now, Hall's Financial Services, is something that flowed from that. Absolutely. So it was a very clear strategy uh, about diversification. Uh, Agriculture um, has its ups and downs. And the family at the time made a very wise decision in terms mm. of how did they diversify their assets. Mm. So just to correct you, it's not the stall, but it's more the farming the, the area. Yes, the farming area. Um, and uh, yep, so it's a very much a diversified business uh, globally and in South Africa. Yeah. And, and Hall's Financial Services, I mean, what exactly do you guys do? So we've, uh, we're a financial services holding business. Uh, we look to, to acquire and build assets where we think we can make a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, in two of our investments, we've partnered with the AA. Okay. Um, and we believe it's a great opportunity to uh, promote value for money products, um, uh, risk products to the South African consumer. Okay. Uh, just talk to me a little bit about how you're involved with the AA. What are the products that you're involved mm. with with the AA? So we have two businesses that uh, we partner with AA. The one is called AA Warranties, mm-hmm. um, and that's very much focused on developing warranties and service plans for motor vehicles. Mm-hmm. So, and those are products that people are going to buy separately uh, after the warranties on their vehicles have maybe run out, and these are value-added products that people can buy maybe for older vehicles or for second-hand vehicles that just protects them if they're on the road, right? Sp- spot on, spot okay. on, Latin. So you either get the warranty or the maintenance plan with your car, yes, um, or if it's come out of manufacturer warranty, you can typically buy it when you buy a second-hand car of a dealer, mm-hmm. or you can buy it... Um, on your own through okay. the web, etc. Yeah. And that and the back end of that is Halls Financial Services. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. And the other business you're involved in? Uh, the other business that we're involved in with the AA is a business called the AA Insurance Supermarket. Right. And it is uh, one of the largest um, aggregators of car and home insurance in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Car and home insurance is a complicated product. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've of the view that by giving clients choice. Yeah. And allowing them to understand the differences between different insurance products in South Africa, 
uh, we think it's the best way that people can actually understand what they're buying yes. and also making sure that we can sell it at the right price. So it's like walking into a retail store uh, yeah. and have a looking at the shelves and saying, well, I don't want that brand. I want this brand. Uh, I like the way – I like the, the cut of the jib of this brand and this brand offers me this or whatever. But you do all of that legwork for the consumer. Correct. So they will phone in and they will say, this is my need. And you will say, okay, well, he has five products that suit that need. Yeah, absolutely. So we will typically give you 10 different quotes for <coughs> car and home insurance. And whilst we'll present the brand and the price, we'll also mm. tell you the difference between it. Okay. So in your supermarket analogy, if there's 10 brands, we'll be able to say that this one's actually got 600 grams and this one's 750 right. grams. And I think what's very important about the relationship, because um, you know uh, halls being as old as they are mm. and the AA being 90 years old themselves, mm. um, there's a certain ethos that comes with that age, right? And and the people that work in these companies have got a certain integrity that comes with that. So while you are, are looking at these different products, you're kind of looking at the consumer's needs rather than trying to push a specific product on them. Correct. Yeah? Uh, absolutely. So very much our business philosophy is hinged around two aspects. One is partnership. Yeah. So is finding the right partners to, uh, to invest in and go down the journey because you can't do it yourself. Yes. And the second part is... Um, is very much sustainability. Right. So we want to be this in the long haul. I think okay. our pedigree is 130 years. Exactly. The AA is 90. And we've, we have a view that if you do the wrong thing for clients, they're going to leave you. Exactly. So we want to be, be able to do the best thing for our clients. Right. Uh, most of the times we try. Yeah. Um, and therefore that we can build long. Um, and people talk. Correct. I mean, you know, if, if, you, do, if you do a client bad, I correct. mean, you know, that, that's going to spread. And it's the same with the AA. You know, we get a lot of feedback from clients. Correct. And obviously we try and do the best for every one of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I mean, Nick, I know you uh, personally, um, you know, you're a man of integrity. You only cheat once or twice on a golf round. So, <laughs> um, no. Uh, and, and I think that the people that you, that you do business with, that also needs to speak to that ethos, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about insurance because I think that's essentially where we are now. Um, uh, before we get on to, this, to, to what certainly for me as from the AA is a bit of a problem is this lack of insurance in a lot of respects. Yeah. But um, just looking at 2020, mm. um, there's been a lot I – mean, I mean COVID has had a huge impact on the insurance industry and, and surely you must have felt that. Yeah, so, so Latin, it's, it's an interesting um, impact. Um, on the one side of, of, uh, of the industry, we, uh, cars weren't driving on the roads yeah. for end of March, April, and May. Uh, so when cars aren't driving, there's typically no claims. Right. So the insurance industry on that side has had you know, a relatively good year. Yeah. Um, but so the utilization has been low, but the payments have carried on. Uh, in some, some aspects, I think there's definitely a, a sector of the population that's really struggled. Right. Um, and typically what happens when people are looking at the income statements mm. is they're looking at the debit orders. And unfortunately, insurance is the first thing yeah. that gets cut. There's mm. just, uh, um, people aren't, don't see that immediate need for it. Right. They cut it. But what is interesting from the insurance industry in South Africa is that there's larger, big kind of impact coming as a mm. result of COVID. So the, with these large hospitality and industry right. COVID claims, it's, it will have a lasting impact on the South African insurance industry. So, right. um, One of the things that we speak about, and we've spoken offline about this as well, is there is very low insurance uptake amongst motorists in South Africa. Correct. And for the AA, that's a huge problem. Mm. Um, we mentioned a figure of one in five. I think a couple of years ago, the official figure was something like 35% of all motorists in the country mm. um, had motor vehicle insurance. And when you look at a motoring population of around 12 million, 14 million vehicles, that is extremely low. Mm. Uh, and I'm sure that because of COVID and the, 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 the preceding years, that number has gone down to probably closer to about 25 to 30% now. Yeah. Um, there's a risk in not having that insurance, right? Yeah, there's, a, there's not only to the consumer themselves, there's yeah. only your own car, uh, but also to the industry itself. So the, um, typically, the, as fewer people pay the insurers, the, the smaller the pool comes in terms of paying claims. So what right. happens is that your premiums go up. Okay. So if those so on thirty five percent, those people are all paying a hundred rand a month. Um, you've got a bigger pool to draw from, but if you've got a pool of twenty five percent, all paying, a, they're going to have to pay one hundred and fifty to get to that figure, right? Yeah, exactly. So okay. that, that smaller pool is effectively picking up the claims. Okay. And um, and uh, and and insurance is very much risk based. Yes. So it's uh, exactly what it is. It's it's insurance for risk. Yeah, absolutely. But it's around the profile more of the individual, the driver. Right. So what you're seeing from a COVID perspective, not only are people looking at cancelling the insurance, which is mm. obviously the wrong thing to do. Right. But there's a whole bunch of new products coming on market. So very much there's use and pay and use yes. type products. So if your car is parked in the garage, 
for you know five days out of seven in the week. Right. You've got a different risk exposure now. Exactly. So we can expect a lot more products coming into the market. So where it's very much um, paying for when you're driving as opposed mm. to paying it for it being in your driver. But that situation surely, I think, is also going to change. Mm. I mean, we've been in a situation, and, I, and uh, they say you should never be in the audience of one. But if I use my own personal experience, um, my usage over a few months was quite low on my vehicle. But it's definitely beginning to pick up more Great. now. And is it, is it feasible to chop and change the, 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 the parameters of your, of your policy every month and say, well, now I'm going to be driving more or now I'm going to be driving less? Or um, So I think the traditional products – uh, which were fixed rated and, and basically didn't really take into consideration how far or, or how often you drove your car. It yeah. just, uh, is that uh, it's difficult to chop and change those. Mm. So these new innovative products that are coming out, there's definitely an opportunity to be able to you know, ch- tweak that on a monthly basis. Sure. I'm not saying swap providers. I don't, that's not the, the right answer. Mm. Um, I think it's important to review your insurance on an annual basis. Yeah, and we can we can discuss that. F- but talk to your insurer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, have that conversation. Exactly. So if 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 you're paying a premium every month and it's something that you feel is is hurting you, have a chat with your insurer and say, listen, guys, how can we manage this a bit better? Correct. Yeah, don't just leave it or don't just cancel it. Correct. Um, I want to talk about the cancelling of insurance because I think um, a lot of people are are, are looking at you know what uh, as you said earlier, um, I've got this problem, I can't make this payment, I'm going to cancel my insurance. Um, but let's use a very practical on-the-ground insurance. Um, I drive a, uh, a 2017 Fortuna. Um, maybe the car is paid off. Maybe my insurance is, you know, I'm, I'm paying it on a, on, a, on a month-by-month basis. Um, but if I were to cancel it, it wouldn't have an impact on any repayments. What are the dangers of me canceling that policy? Yeah, so okay, so it may, maybe take it a step further. I'm in a crash. Yeah. What is the impact on me? So, obviously, the, the magnitude of the crash is, is significant in that. But without that cover, is um, throughout the value chain, is uh, your car is going to get towed. It's going to end up at a panel beater. There's costs involved in that. And, and often those are hidden costs in the insurance yeah. world because you don't see it if yeah. you're insured. And storage costs. Uh, absolutely. And the storage costs, and uh, those typically can be very high. Yeah. Um, and especially if you are the one negotiating against the storage and, and the companies themselves. Yeah. Um, but effectively, that bill is yours. Yeah. And uh, and if you were at fault, you may even have to pay for the other person's vehicle, correct. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, if you're at fault, you are going to be picking up the cost eventually yeah. through some form of litigation on the other vehicle. So right. you, whereas insurance, you have third-party cover. Yes. So that, that would be covered from your typical insurance. Right. But effectively, instead of paying that 700, 800 rand a month kind of premium, yeah. you're now setting yourself back 20, 30, 40 grand right. to get your car fixed. Yes. And that car is potentially a tool of trade. Yes. How do you get people around? Exactly. You don't have the car hire. And actually, you end up, you're in a, pretty, a far worse predicament than you were yes. by paying the, the premium. Your kids have got to get to school. Absolutely. Uh, you're sitting at home and um, uh, Johnny falls out of the tree and breaks his leg and how do you get him to the hospital? So yeah. it's all these things you've got to consider. Yeah. So the cost of a premium, okay, and we've said, look, if you've got an issue, discuss it with your insurer. Yeah. The cost of the premium is exactly that. It's insurance. It's, it's covering you for the risk. And it's one of those things, and I think that this is perhaps where a lot of people don't consider the future. It's about protecting you in the case of what if. Absolutely. Right? And it's not something that you can just forego. Yeah. Um, in terms of life insurance, same type of deal, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Leighton, that, that what if concept is that unless you've gone through an accident – and you've understood the process and the costs involved, if, uh, uh, unless you've lost a loved one, yeah, um, the, you don't understand the costs involved. Mm. Um, so that's the unfortunate uh, the, uh, issue around insurance and risk uh, transfer, is that unless you've gone through it, you don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so f- from a life insurance perspective, so your example earlier uh, around having making sure you had adequate protection on your car, but if it was financed, mm. you know, so what happens to you or family if uh, you know the, um, uh, hopefully nothing does happen to you. But if you leave that liability on that car loan, yeah, to your family and yeah. that car is potentially written off. So one mm. is they don't have a car, yeah, and they don't have a breadwinner anymore to pay it. So yeah. typically, you're putting your fa- your family in a further financial predicament right. 
by not having the adequate protection. You're making it their problem. Absolutely. But, but, but I think the, the other point that, that really needs to be made clear is that if you have a car on finance, mm-hmm. um, you're legally obligated to have that car under insurance, right? Uh, absolutely. And, the f- yeah. and if you cancel that insurance, you are in breach of the contract with your financer. Correct. And they could potentially come and repossess that vehicle. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They may. Okay. Um, uh, so the finance house actually owns that car, right? And um, they compel it to to take insurance to protect their asset. Exactly. And, and it's not only for a new car. Let's be very clear about yeah. that. If if you were to buy a second hand car from a dealer or uh, or even through a private sale, but you had that car financed by a finance house, you are obligated to have that car under insurance. Absolutely. Right? Um, uh, People are cancelling their policies, and it's the wrong move. And they're cancelling their life policies as well, which is the wrong move. But um, are insurers, when you have that conversation with them, are they open to saying to you, "Well, listen, Nick, l- l- let's have a chat and let's see how we can manage this better for you"? Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's easier in the car and home space to have that chat, right? Uh, because you can you can make tweaks on the policies in terms of what you would like to cover and what you don't want to cover. The life insurance is slightly more difficult. Um, you can drop your covers, which is not something I would be advising. Right. I think it's important as when people are buying any insurance products is they fully understand what they are buying. Yes. And it's also important to understand that you're adequately covered. Yeah. So it's pointless taking a life insurance policy for 100,000 Rand when your mm. debt and your obligations are a million Rand. Right. Know, effectively. You know, you, uh, um, so insurers are able to do it. But if your insurer is not unwilling to engage with you, it's important that you go to speak to other insurers. Mm. So, but I think the point that you're making as well is, is uh, you know, do your homework. Correct. Find out what insurance policies are available and Correct. what they offer. And speak to a insurance supermarket because these are the guys who are the experts and they're going to direct you in the right direction. They're going to tell you where to go, uh, what products are available for you. But I think the overriding message should be take the damn time. Correct. You know, um, kind of consult some stuff on the internet, have a chat with family members. Maybe if you're a younger person like I am, you know, have a chat to an older person like you, kind of get that type of background, you know. Draw on experience, but do that homework and invest the time to actually consider insurance seriously. Agreed. Um, so don't invest too much time. Yeah. Um, you become like my brother who has a spreadsheet for every decision he makes in his <laughs> okay. life and never ends up making a decision. Decision, right. Yeah, but uh, but absolutely. I think yeah. So insurance is… But speak to the experts. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, the AI insurance supermarket world is is that we will provide you with 10 quotes. Right. And then our team of qualified financial advisors will basically take you through the different options. Right. So because we've got 10 different brands on our on our panel, each insurer has a different appetite for risk. Right. Okay. So one insurer may have uh, an appetite for your type of risk. Yes. Um, and, and, and someone else may have an appetite for a younger individual. I'm with you. So if you go to a single insurer, you're not necessarily getting the best price. Right. So we will be able to con- offer you the best price. But the most important aspect about it is that understanding the underlying policy you've bought. I'm with you. So price is not the most important thing. When right. you buy insurance, you want to make sure that your claims can be paid. Right. And you also want to make sure that if you do have an accident, is your excess isn't half the cost of the accident. Exactly. Because that almost Because a lot back. of people don't think about that. No. They think, well, I'm paying a premium of 150 rand a month and that's fantastic and whatever. Uh, and then they're involved in an accident and the insurer comes back and says, hey, by the way, listen, your excess is 10,000 rand. Yeah. And people don't understand the concept of an excess. They say, but I've been paying my insurance. Exactly. Why must I pay 10,000 rand? And up front, you know, uh, absolutely, and and and, and sorry, mm. uh, that may be for a claim of eleven and a half thousand rand. Exactly. Yeah. yeah absolutely, and uh, that excess is uh, it's very important to understand mm. to understood as a consumer, right? Um, and if you don't understand it, it's you have a right and obligation to ensure, yeah, that you be getting all the information from your insurer. Um, and if they're not telling you, then I suggest you not partner with that insurer. And understand if you're getting um, information, understand what you are getting yourself into, right? Correct. Okay, and that's part of doing your homework. Um, I really like the fact that you've got these trained financial advisors at Insurance Supermarket um, that actually assist the public in making a decision. So they're going to put three or four options on the table and you can choose from that. So whereas you go to insure one, you may be going to get 10 products, Correct. but you come to Insurance Supermarket, you're going to get 100 different products that you can choose from, right? Potentially, yeah. Okay. Um, just talk to me. I mean, we've, we've been through this issue of, of 2020 and the impact it's had on the on the insurance industry, what do you expect is going to happen in 21 in terms of the in- insurance industry? Yeah, so Leighton, it's an interesting question because most of our predictions for 2020 have all been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um, I think South Africans um, are going to continue to look at their income statements and right. understand what costs they should be cutting out. Yeah. Um, 
and so there's going to be renewed pressure on insurers to be able to retain clients. Okay. Um, uh, but I do suspect there's going to be a lot of churn in the industry as well as people start shopping around the insurance saying, yeah. I'm paying this, can I get it for cheaper? Yeah. And, and, and we would support that. I think okay. it's important on an annual or every two-year basis, specifically mm. for car and home insurance, yeah. is to, to shop it around. You know, yeah, yeah. Different insurers have different appetites at different times. Mm. As you get older mm. uh, and as you get more experience driving a car, mm. your premiums will come down. Right. Your, your risk profile will improve. Right. So therefore, it's your, relatively your insurance get, should get cheaper. But if I've got insurance with a specific carrier at the moment, yeah. even though I've been with them for 20 years, yeah. I should phone them every two years and say, hey, guys, let's have a chat. Absolutely. You know, uh, I'm a little bit more mature in age now. I've come, you know, my wild ways have passed. I'm driving a lot better now. Um, you know, let's have a chat about this. Yeah. There are a lot of products on the market in terms of vehicles where you can, you can actually determine how you're driving. An AA connected car is one of those, um, you know, where you put a device in your vehicle and it, and it links to your cell phone Absolutely. and you can actually see how you're driving. And that's the type of information you can download Absolutely. and you can provide it to insurance supermarket and they say, well, this is useful information. Let's see what we can get for you. Correct. Right. Um, you speak about income statements and, and, and how that works. And, and I like the concept, Nick, because I think it's a very clear way of thinking about it. But from an individual point of view, you know, people are making New Year's resolutions now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, looking towards 2021, uh, not from an insurance perspective, but from a personal perspective, what should people be doing in terms of their insurance needs? Yeah, so I think um, so. People need to make sure that they're adequately covered, right? Um, and adequately means um, not too low, not too high, right? So there is a risk of you having too much insurance, um, which is just. And will, will will an insurer say you you may be over, you, you may be paying too much? Um, so if you, it's got, part of your homework. It is part of your homework, but if you've got insurance specifically in the life and the funeral space, and you've yeah. got covers policies across the market with different insurers, that that those insurers won't know you've got other cover. Oh right, okay. So that's an important aspect, and therefore that financial advice aspect is important, right? Uh, to making sure that you've got adequate cover. Speak to the expert. Uh, speak to the experts, absolutely. Um, but uh, the as people are building the income statements into the next year, and January comes sure. uh, because uh, people have spent more than they've had in, in the, from a December's perspective. Right. Is uh, is that typically insurance is something that we see it every year in January. Our collection rates do dip. Oh, really? Um, and then they pick up again in February. Okay. Um, and uh, it's a it's a common theme, but it's it's the wrong it's approach. the wrong approach to be doing it. Um, and my advice to to South Africans uh, who are have insurance or thinking about insurance is to is is think about those what if events. Yeah. Is that do you have the cash reserves mm. to be able to help you in a time of crisis? Right. If you don't, then you need someone to help you. Right. So you have got two choices. One in my mind, at least, is that you one you can take insurance and you can prepay, or that you can go and get take further debt. Yeah. And insurance will be cheaper than the debt that you ever take to cover that. But people need to be honest with themselves, right? Correct. So um, I'm sitting down and I'm doing my budget for 2021 or I'm doing it for January, uh, January, okay? And I'm looking and I'm saying, well, I've got five cell phones in the house, yeah. um, but there's only four people. Do I really need the fifth one? Or everybody's on X contract. Do they really need this contract? Or I may have a really good premium television package uh, with a specific carrier. Do I really need that? Um, you know, I've got all these luxury items that I have. Um, you know, maybe I'm paying a lot on a car repayment. Maybe I should consider, you know, scaling down or getting... Re- but at the end of the day, um, the message is is that insurance is one of those things that you've got to keep in the back of your head. Yes, it's a it's it sometimes is a grudge purchase for people, but it's one of those things you've actually really got to have because absolutely. it's all about f- looking to the future. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I like your your analogy of the of a TV package. Yes. So if you cancelled your TV package, the only thing you're really going to miss out on is maybe some programs right. or a movie, but yeah. you'll eventually get it. If you cancel insurance and you crash your car and you're out of that you're gonna be living that with that for the rest of your life. Right. And it's it's hard to it's hard to sometimes get that across to individuals, but it's it's that's the reality. We've spoken, um, and and our colleague David Chart at AO Warranties has also mentioned this a few times, but um, you know, if you don't have a warranties product or if you don't have an insurance product, you kind of live your life in, in almost, like, uh, almost like a bubble of nothing's going to happen to me. Right? Correct. But the minute something happens to you, you out of pocket for a large amount of money. And as we said earlier, you know, it's a very big outlay you're going to make immediately. That type of outlay could potentially set you back quite a long way, right? Um, uh, long way. It set you back years. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt. So 
Yeah. And we're not fear mongering here. No, I'm no, we're not. I, mean, I don't want. I don't want to give the impression that we're kind of trying to build something up that Ooh, isn't there. No. But it's it's the truth. It sets you back. Yeah, absolutely. So if we, if we go back to the income statement and you and you budgeting to to break even or, or save that five hundred rand or a thousand rand a month, whatever that number is, and you yeah. have a, a calamity of some sort. Yeah. You've got to go and find that money. Yeah. You need to go and do it somewhere else. So you either need to chop something else out of your income statement or you go and borrow. And that could set you back months or years. Yeah. And actually could actually push out plans, other plans that you potentially had. So right. sending kids to university, um, uh, potential holidays. Yeah. Uh, and because you've taken the short-termism view of, I don't understand the cost of insurance because it's never going to happen to me. So yeah. exactly that bubble you talk about. Mm. But it's it's also about being a responsible adult. Absolutely. Okay? And, and I mean, I, I don't want to play too hard on this point, but um, having insurance, um, having something like AM membership, um, having a warranties product, you know, covering yourself is something uh, that we would always advise people to do just from a practical point of view because it, it's something that covers you wherever you are. Yeah. And it's it's something you may not need today. You may not need it in five years' time. Yeah. But when it when you do need it, it's there, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, in in terms of AA insurance supermarket, right. I mean, uh, I, I would imagine twenty twenty has been tough for you. But you guys put in a lot of plans and processes before the time to make sure that you were able to carry on. Just give me very briefly a background to that. Yeah. So, um, the, you know, so one of the plans we put in a couple of years ago was, was can we keep on working? Right. In, a, in a, an event, we never planned for a COVID event, so we were able to actually get our team home safely, and we were everyone was working from home from the middle of March. So, so you was an insurer who was thinking ahead. Correct, absolutely. Okay. So we 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 should we should be thinking about risk. Yeah, um, you should be thinking about. But risk. we weren't thinking about a COVID risk. We were thinking about what happens if our building burns down or oh, right. a, we get robbed, etc. But okay. we put the plans in place to to manage the event. So we've. We put our people first so we can get them home, right. uh, and um, it, that was our first uh, our first priority. And we've been able to continue to work. Okay, excellent. Uh, but we've also we've we've shifted focus and, and and strategy. So you know we've we are typically a very call center based uh, uh, business, and we're now moving into the online space. Okay, good. So uh, COVID has accelerated e-commerce in South Africa. There's no doubt. So I don't know how many people actually did their Shopping online, yeah. from the groceries from Pick and Pay, Woolworths, Spy, etc. But now with that check of 60, 60 yeah, and, yeah. and these uh, shopping apps, everyone's doing it. Well, not everyone, but it's grown. It's very, very much so. So we believe that there's going to be, um, uh, as South Africans become more comfortable with e-commerce and mm. buying on the internet, we believe that buying insurance will uh, become more prominent on online. So right. we've put, we're putting in plans where we've already executed on the warranty space. So you can go online and buy a full comprehensive warranty for your vehicle online in a matter of minutes uh, without having And to everything you need to know is explained to you. Absolutely. Very clear, yeah. very, you know, it's, 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 it's like, you know, you're doing part of your homework, but, uh, you know, everything that you need to know is there. And if you do have any questions, you can either speak to somebody Absolutely. online or you can just give somebody a call, right? Absolutely. So even on the website journey, if you're uncertain, you can actually yeah. push the button and someone will call you. How do people get in touch with you guys, Nick? Uh, you can find us uh, from the AA website. Okay. Uh, so there's links from uh, the AA website to… So www.aa.co.za. Correct. Or uh, www.aawarranties.co.za. Okay. Perfect. Um, and uh, www.aainsurancesupermarket.co.za. Okay, good. Um, but is, but l- l- as we talk about these what-if uh, events, there's, um, you know, we talked about life insurance. Right. And… Um, and what is important there is, I think, as people are doing their budgets, is thinking about is that if you're the breadwinner like I am in my family and something right. happened to me, is that do they have enough money to survive? And it's not next year or the year after. It's yeah. the next 20, 30 years. Yes. And Very good call. So can your kids keep on going to school? Right. Uh, do they need to make life-changing decisions yeah. because I'm no longer around? Yeah. And that's the key thing about life insurance yeah. that protects you, f- uh, and that's important. And. And it goes back to if you haven't been through it, you don't understand it. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been through it, but I've been in the industry, so I can see it. I yes. understand it. And the other one is really important to plan for is also is winding up your estate. Yes. So it's vitally important that people have a will. Okay, good. Because when uh, when something does happen, so if something happens to me, there's no will, the master of the court, they will start making decisions on right. my assets. Okay. And my, I want my assets to transfer to my wife and my children. Right. And without a will in place… People make other decisions, which won't be my decisions. And that's something that's a service you guys offer. Absolutely. So, in partnership with the AA and Capital Legacy, so we offer all our members, the AA members, a free will consultation and a free will. Okay. Um, but what we will also do uh, through Capital Legacy is that what is also one of these events that if you haven't been through it is that the cost of winding up your estate is really expensive. Yeah. So it's very high. Around about three percent of your asset value. Yes. And. Uh, 
the and then your the the executive of your state and the associated services. Three percent of your state can be quite a lot of money, but they want that in cash. Right. So, do you want your family to have to go and sell properties and sell uh, assets, etc., to convert that to cash? And through Capital Legacy with the AA, we're also offering products that cover the cost of mm. winding up the state. So, that actually, there is a zero impact on your beneficiaries when you die. It's a very important point we're talking about. Um, I think we'll wrap up on this point. But, you know, we talked a lot about having, you know, a vehicle and, and, and asset financing. But, I mean, life policies and wills, I mean, these are really important products. These are really important things that you have to have. Again, it's about looking to the future. And about who you're going to leave behind and what type of, uh, you know, uh, legacy you're going to leave for them. Are they going to be okay once you've gone? Correct. Um, or are they going to have to pick up these huge financial pieces that you've left behind and then cover all these debts? And you, nobody wants that, right? No, absolutely. Right. So, I mean, if you, if you are a, a breadwinner uh, at the moment and you are paying, you know, you, you're paying a bond on a house and, and, and you're kind of looking after everything and you're paying school fees or whatever the case is, you know, that's a part of your responsibility. But looking further afield, your responsibility has to extend to a period when you may not be here. Exactly. And an insurance supermarket will actually take you through this process as well, right? Um, and not, not on the life and the world space, but we obviously we'll direct. Yeah, I mean, they'll direct you to where you need to Correct. go. Right? Okay. And, you, and, and in terms of the wills, you'll be able to get advice and you'll be able to find out. Absolutely. And, and once you go online, all of this information is available to you. Then. Absolutely. Nick, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for coming in and I really appreciate it. And that's uh, our episode today with Nick Hughes, the MD of A Insurance Supermarket. This has been another episode of AA Connect. Thank you for watching.